Well, hi, I'm Danielle from Wendell Woodworks, and today I'm making this cute little taco toy for a little friend's first birthday party. I made this pattern myself on Procreate, and I have it available for free for you in the video description below, so you can print it off and follow along. Let's talk with our taco shell. He is a happy taco. I love using reclaimed materials, so I'm using some oak plywood that came off of an old crib, as well as an oak board for the middle section. I like the look of the oak grain for a taco shell, but you can use a quarter inch plywood of choice or even MDF if you want to take the time to paint it. I'm going to stack two of the quarter inch oak boards together so that I can cut the front and the back of the shell at the same time and make sure they're identical. They're attached with painter's tape on both sides to protect the boards and spray adhesive. Then I'm going to put my shell template on top using the same method. And unless you want the face on both sides of the taco, we're gonna cut just the outside line to make the front and the back of the shell. And I cut this with a number five modified geometry blade, although a smaller blade would suffice. It's often my go-to blade and it makes smooth and easy cuts. And now I'm going to detach the back layer and drill the pilot holes on just the top layer so I can cut out the eyes and the smile. Now for the middle part of our taco, we're gonna need a board that's a quarter inch to a half inch thick and then one and a quarter inch wide. Originally when I made this the first time and did the math in my head of having four ingredients, each a quarter inch thick, that is one inch. So I made the middle of my taco one inch wide. But then what happened is that I didn't factor in the thickness of the primer and the paint. So once I finished the ingredients, they were really tight in the taco and you don't want a toddler to have to hammer your pieces in. So give yourself an extra quarter inch on your board. I had some extra boards from the crib that I'm using, but if you have enough of the plywood, you can just use your plywood and you even use your scroll saw just to create a strip of wood. And laying the shell on top of the board, I'm gonna trace the curve so I know exactly what to cut at the scroll saw so it just fits perfectly. And then after sanding everything smooth, I will glue it tightly together with wood glue and clamp it together. Once that's all dry, I sanded the shell edges one more time so that it was all flush and I finished it with a linseed oil, a child-friendly finish. You could also use shellac here or another type of oil. And of course, now it's time for the toppings. We have our ground beef, our cheese, our lettuce, our tomato. They don't look like much right now, but we're gonna hit them with the Dremel tool afterwards to make the magic. But to start with, I'm gonna go ahead and attach these to a quarter inch MDF. And using my number five modified geometry blade, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out. To give you some more realism, I love to use a Dremel tool and I love these sanding discs. I don't really have a great method other than just to go crazy with it and make divots until you feel satisfied. And then over on the cheese, I like to use a sanding disc as well to try to just make more straighter lines versus the curves, just to make some nice, subtle and smooth lines. It looks a little bit more like cheese. So last time I made this, I realized, wow, this Dremel is super heavy. And of course they've got like rotary tools that are lighter, but they're very expensive. I'm gonna try this for the very first time. I just picked this up off of Amazon. It was, I think maybe 30 bucks. So I'm gonna give this a go, attach it to my Dremel and see if it doesn't save my hand. Some cramps a little bit. And if you don't feel like you know what you're doing here, you're in good company. The good news is that there are no rules to break, so you are good to go. Just always wear a mask when working with this MDF. So you can see better on the prime side, just the crisscross lines that I made. Look, toddlers aren't picky. They're easily pleased. That's the best part about making kid toys. So don't worry so much about it. I just did some crisscross patterns for the cheese and of course the divots over here um, for the ground beef. Now we get to the harder cuts of the tomato and the lettuce. And the first time I made this toy, I cut out the pieces individually so I could shape each piece and then I glued them back together. That would work for a older kid but since this is for a toddler who's probably going to be banging this toy around, I thought, you know what, that's probably going to be very unstable. It's a lot easier to break. So I'm going to actually leave this as one whole piece. I'm going to go around and cut out the outsides. And the tomatoes, I'm just going to shape with the engraving tool on my Dremel here in a bit. Uh, and then I'm going to show you some fancy beveling technique that you can do on the lettuce. So first, let's just cut these out. I'm going to do one fancy thing with this lettuce. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bevel my saw. So some saws bevel the tabletop. My pig is actually bevels a whole arm. So I'm gonna come down here. Ooh, that's dusty. Yep, I don't have my desk connector. 
up. So I'm gonna unlock it and I'm gonna turn this to four degrees. So what I want is just a subtle dimension change. So I'm going to cut starting on the left side of my template and turning the piece counterclockwise to the right side. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna make the pieces pop out just a bit. So I'm gonna do that to the insides and I'll show you. All right, so I just finished that cut. Let me show you what that did here. So the back side is gonna be bigger than the top side. So it's gonna push through, but then catch. So once I get some wood glue in there, that'll be a really tight fit. It's gonna keep it from falling apart or coming back through. But it also will give the top side a cool little dimension change there to make it a little bit more lifelike. And you should have enough room in your taco in order to fit that. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest the same way. Make sure you start on the same side for each of your pieces so they're going the same direction. And I'm just gonna follow this line up and around, turn off the saw and punch it out. Again, I don't want them to be completely separated, but I can go ahead and cut this line in to get to the insides there. All right, now we've got our beveled lettuce lines that stick out and we'll take these and the tomatoes over to the Dremel. And now I'm moving to my tomato. I'm gonna switch out my disc sander for an engraving bit and I'm leaving the template on and I'm just gonna trace it around and engrave these lines and then I'll sand it over and kind of smooth it out afterwards. This uh, little shaft here has seriously saved my hand. I My hand hurt so bad using just my heavy Dremel, although I love it. And I was like, I don't wanna do that again. So I'm glad I made the investment. It's not that expensive. It's probably one of the most inexpensive um, smaller rotary tools that you can have. So I think the shaft is a good investment. I'll stick it down below in case you're interested. So my hand still really hurts. <laughs> but here's what we have the tomatoes. Honestly, my hand was getting so tired. I was like, I should have just painted on these details. I should have just engraved the separate pieces and painted. But you know what? That's all right. I think it'll be worth it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take this engraving bit to the lettuce now. And I'm just going to engrave the lines that separate. And then I'm going to put the disc sander back on just to kind of do the shaping of the inside edges here and the outside edges. And I'll also bring it back to my tomatoes just to kind of smooth out um, some of these lines. Maybe even make this more of an indent just to create a higher separation. This is all just kind of extra. You can shape however you want, more or less, it is up to you, especially if you're really good with painting and you can create those details that way. We've got tomatoes and we've got lettuce. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of glue on the sides of this lettuce, on the back sides of this lettuce. And I'm gonna go ahead and push them through and let that sit for a while so that those are nice and secured and then it'll be time to paint. I actually have a whole tutorial coming out on safe finishes for kid toys. So keep an eye out for that because there are a lot of good non-toxic options. Because I made this toy with MDF, I chose a non-toxic chalk paint. The chalk paint covers much better than acrylic and it seals off the MDF better. So I have a little set of colors that we can blend and make work for the colors. Shellac is a great kid safe seal for any paint choice. The end result is an adorable handmade toy that can be enjoyed for many, many years. I can't wait to gift it. So cute. And for another great kid pattern and tutorial, you can check out this video and subscribe to my channel for ongoing tips. Happy scrolling.